Hello. So today I want to record a screencast for beginner um, developers, beginning developers who want to get started in front end uh, JavaScript uh, and web development programming. Okay. And uh, you, I'm sure you've heard of React.js and AngularJS and Vue.js and so many other JavaScript uh, development frameworks. Uh, but all those are much more complicated and uh, turns out not as soft sophisticated as they claim to be. Uh, instead, my advice to you is you should go straight to, to Svelte. Svelte is a, uh, in my opinion, much better way of uh, developing front-end web applications, uh, JavaScript applications, even server-side um, back-end application actually for that matter. Uh, for the web and it is not a, a runtime framework like react.js is or um, angular.js vue.js they are uh, svelte is a compiler javascript compiler now if you are a beginning programmer who wants to get started in ui programming ui development um, it, none of these things should matter just one thing that matters to you is svelte is simple it's much simpler than the other uh, frameworks. And it actually is faster, more performant, and yet simpler and smaller. So what's there not to like? So let's get started. Uh, the website that you should be familiar with is svelte.dev. Keep in mind that I am going to start completely from scratch. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get started. Uh, I'll show you how to install all the tools that you need. <clears throat> But the website you should be familiar with is Swell.dev, and there is a tutorial there. You can you can follow that tutorial. Uh, now, before we dive into Swell, let's make sure we have all the tools that we need. So the first thing you need is Node.js. Now, depending on which operating system you are on, Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, um, you will have different methods of installing it. I am uh, if, so if you are on Windows, just go get the MSI Windows installer. If you are on Mac OS, there is a, a uh, an installer there to hear the the package, 64-bit, um, I guess. And Linux has its own way of doing it. Um, you can either download the binaries or you can install it using an apt-get or other installers. But either way, once you install those, that is when you will have um, two things. One is Node.js. So this is your Node.js. And you, the other tool you will get is NPM. So that's NPM. Node.js is uh, basically a JavaScript uh, runtime which, uh, machine for executing JavaScript on the server. Server means um, even your desktop. Uh, when we say server, we just mean not on the browser, okay? Uh, so it's the server-side JavaScript engine. NPM is stands for Node Package Manager, and that is needed. Even though you are doing UI programming, you don't really need server-side JavaScript. What you need is NPM, Node Package Manager, and this is what will allow you to download all kinds of uh, packages and modules that you will use in your UI programming. Another program that you will use is NPX. All three of them, uh, Node, NPM, and NPX, they all come together in the same um, Node.js setup, which we did here. Then, the next thing you need uh, is perhaps Yarn. So now Yarn does not come with it. The way you install Yarn is you say NPM uh, install minus G. And Yarn. So what is Yarn? Yarn is uh, sort of very similar to NPM, but it is much faster than NPM because it caches most of the dependencies. So and so what you're doing is you're saying NPM install minus G Yarn as in global. Now it failed in my case because I am on, on uh, um, Mac OS and on Mac OS when you want to install something globally, you have to do, do that as the root, the privileged user. So, sudo npm install minus g as in global yarn. Uh, let's go over this, what it means. Sudo means do this as root. 
npm is the node package manager and here's a command for npm npm uh, is being told to install something what is that something that something is yarn but then there is a minus g flag which says do it globally if you don't say globally it will install it in your home directory and not in on the machine wide directory okay let's go so now it is installing yarn it has installed yarn done uh, actually, I already had yarn, but that's okay. Okay, so now we have npm node npx and yarn. Next tool is Visual Studio Code, VS Code. So Google for VS Code and uh, install VS Code. You can download it, of course, and uh, for your operating system. So VS Code is a, an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. You will need this for editing your code running your programs. It even has an embedded shell. Um, so you should definitely get VS Code. All right, assuming you have those two things, let's start our first Swell program. So the way you do that is you type, let me clear the screen. Uh, uh, you type npx as in npm execute something without actually downloading it so npm execute and uh, dgit 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 is a is a node npm uh, pack uh, program that allows you to clone a git repository without the git part just the working directly the source code of it so uh, there is a, on github.com there is swell js uh, project uh, user and there is a project called template this is the swell js template and that's what we want to um, clone or download so the way we do that is we just say npxd get we don't have to say github we just say swell js slash template and now you give it the name of the directory where the project will be cloned so hello all right that's it it was that fast it simply copied downloaded and copied that project into hello Swelt. now if we go into hello Swelt, we have you know some downloaded code uh, now rest of the work we will not do here we will do it in vs code let's go to vs code so here i have um, visual studio code installed and on on the left is the vs code on right there's google chrome so i have it in split screen mode so that we can um, do some coding in on the left and then see the effect of it on the right okay so now open let's open our uh, project and that is in uh, we just find the the project that we were looking for and hit open okay once you do that you will see everything on the left um there now don't be overwhelmed there is a little bit uh, much going on here uh, let's start from the most important file in any npm based project npm again is node package manager the most important f file there is package.json package.json is the heart of npm based project it, uh, your project is given a name version scripts these are very important we'll come back to them dev dependencies are the dependencies that are needed on the packages that are needed during development time and dependencies are the packages needed during runtime you will notice there is a roll up a lot of roll up related packages these this is the roll up uh, the um, build tool we will not go deep into that because that's complicated for now. Uh, so let's ignore rollups uh, related uh, things. But you see, Swelch itself is a dev dependency, not a runtime dependency because Swelch is a compiler, not a framework. It just compiles to plain JavaScript that runs in the browser or on the server for that matter. All right, so that's what back. Now let's come back to scripts. This is rather important. Uh, there are in this there are three scripts build dev and start um, now 
these scripts are given these names and then they have uh, you know their detail is on the right hand side uh, whatever they do uh, build will compile your application to in, in its final form optimized form dev gives you live coding and live reloading hot module reloading so this is what you will use while you're developing and start is once you have built and output your code start will start serving the code as static um static uh, project serving so i think most of the time you will uh, run dev oh i i i ran dev there by mistake and it failed why did it fail because um i think uh, it failed because none of these packages that are listed are actually present so let's get those packages if you look at node module c it's mostly empty there's hardly anything thing in there so let's get those packages downloaded for that you have to run npm install okay npm install is the actually the slower way of doing things uh, we could have done yarn install that is the faster way of doing things but in any case at this point they are both reasonably fast if you do the yarn install second time of course it's super fast npm install will also be fast because all the packages are already there you can run it any number of times it doesn't hurt uh, but generally yarn install is faster okay so now that we have installed uh, run, run yarn install now node mo module has lots of modules in there uh, we will not look at them mm. but what is important to you is you should be, be able to look at package.json and take a look at what these scripts mean now if you want to run the scripts you uh, you can say npm run and whatever the name of the script is dev or start or, or whichever but i'm not going to run it using this shell oh by the way just keep in mind that i am on mac os or if, even if you are on linux your your default shell is bash on windows your default shell is windows command shell i strongly recommend you not to use windows command shell and instead download bash for windows and use that as your default shell if possible uh, your life will be much easier that way that's just a suggestion now let's now that we have the hello uh, swelt um, project uh, we can run executed by running dev so we can click on this uh, or we could type npm run dev i don't want to do that in this i will do it here one more thing uh, in vs code if you don't see all of these uh, tools and utilities make sure you have installed appropriate extensions and i have installed javascript extension i have also installed swelt related extensions so uh, swelt intellisense swelt swelt snippet and so on and so forth so you should install those and along with those javascript related and npm related um, extensions will get installed and that's when you will get this so let me hit dev so as i hit dev dev server is running and i can control uh, command click control click and that should open my server it did and uh, it opened my server in my browser but it opened it off screen so let me just copy this um and paste it here and enter there you go hello world visit the swell tutorial to learn how to build swell apps so what's going on well what's going on is uh dev is running rollup rollup has a config file here that config file is pre programmed to to execute um to manipulate index.html here and in that index.html it injects the bundle.js and which is generated from main.js so this is where your program actually starts main.js what is it doing it is importing app from app.swelt which is this file we'll come to it and then once it gets that app object app class rather it instantiates that class 
right? And returns it. But as it does that, it also configures it such that the the app component, so this is a component, uh, will target itself to document body, which means when it looks at index.html, it will inject itself inside the body. And main.js is, again, uh, it instantiates the app component. The app component injects itself to tar and document body. And quite importantly, it passes these props. As in, what are, what are props? Uh, props is short for properties. And so uh, the name of the property is name and the value is word. Now let's see how the app component uses this property. So for that, we can go to app.svelte. We can either open it from here or we can just command click on app.svelte. Okay, for some reason it opens the wrong file. Uh, let's, uh, let's get back to where we were, app.svelte, yes, here. Hold on one second. Okay, all right, so this is app.svelte. It has JavaScript script tag, it has some HTML, and it has some style, CSS style. So let's do uh, a reformatting. Uh, I like to reformat because it's going to rearrange the uh, content a bit. Okay, so let's look at the HTML first. It produces hello, and then in curly braces, there is the variable name, and, and the whole thing is wrapped in h1 tag, heading one. And then there is a paragraph, okay? So before we go to that, let's, let me show you the fact that this is running a, as npm run dev, it, al it also has uh, HMR or hot module reloading enabled. As soon as we make any changes to the code anywhere in this project, it will cause this browser to reload. Let's, let's see if that happens. I'm gonna delete this whole paragraph. And I am going to save. So I'm just gonna save it. I saved it. As you can see, this recompile uh, re happened here and then reload happened here. That paragraph is gone. If I change anything else, I put dot, dot, dot here and then save it. And that triggered the, the recompile and that triggered the reload. So let's undo this. Um, now, now let's look at this component itself. As you saw that main.js was passing in if you look at the main.js, it's passing in a property whose name is name and value is word. And that property is declared by the component here. Export let name. Uh, let's ignore the style for now. And then it uses that property inside curly braces as a JavaScript expression. Now, if we were to change the value of the property from word to something else, Hello, uh, developer, let's say. And if I save this, immediately, hello world changes to hello developer. Why? Because the incoming value of the property has been changed from world to developer, which affects this value, which affects this expression. So far, so good. Um, all, let me, before we close this video, let's see some magical behavior of Svelte. Uh, you can not only bind it from code into HTML template, but you can also bind it in the reverse direction from HTML into the code, into JavaScript code. So here, input bind value equal to name, right? So now, what, what we are doing is we are creating an input, uh, input text box. It 
will obviously all inputs have a value and that value will start out with the value of name but when you type into this uh, input box it will affect the value of name also so that's why i said two way as you can see it started with the value of developer which is the current starting value of name and then you can just change this back to world as you can see we are typing and in real time whatever we type in real time it it shows up uh, up above and that what is happening is uh, not only the input derives its value from name the thing is name it also derives its value from input that is called two way binding and all of this is happening because swelt is aware of the fact that uh, our keystrokes uh, are affecting the value of input and that value is bound to the value of the local variable name and that name is then bound, uh, injected into this heading 1 template so it knows how to update so uh, let's stop here and uh, i hope you were able to understand what various tools uh, are doing and there is npm uh, npm node js we haven't used and we won't use for a while npx which is sort of like npm but it executes an npm downloaded program directly without downloading it there is yarn which is the faster version cached version of npm and whenever you want to execute scripts you have say npm run dev or run start or run build so let, before we close let's let's run the other two um let's kill this we can kill this control c will kill this and let's run the build so once we run the build it has executed and ex uh, create public build bundle.js so if you go into the public directory there is a build directory and in there there is bundle.js and it is a uh, you know minified javascript so there's not much interesting going on there and now if you want to serve so this this was the dev server if you want to serve that uh, the statically built bundle.js directly then you hit start and when you hit start you reload you will get the same behavior except that this is smaller bundle.js as you can see it's uh, well serving that but i don't know how how large it is let's see how large it is let's man l build no public build and bundle.js is only 3 kilobytes that's pretty small try comparing it with any other framework like react js angular js or even vue js the run times are very large your program is also large and those two things together are even larger and here the entire program that you need is bundle.js and possibly bundle.css and they are just 3 kilobytes roughly all right i hope you learned something see you next time